Okay, labeling your digital photos are just as important as labeling your uh, paper photos in genealogy. And there's two ways to do it. Uh, I would probably prefer both. One is adding text to the image, and another is embed the text in an image. Uh, let's start out by adding text. We'll need a program that will let you adjust the canvas and add text. There's a lot of free ones out on the internet. I like Git because it does so much. Just don't be threatened by how much it does if you're a beginner at it. Just learn a little bit at a time. Okay, here's my image. I'm going to want to adjust the canvas size. Let me bring this over. You can work in inches, pixels, percentages. For me, pixels are easier to use. And we want to unlink the ratio. That'll keep it so I can add just a certain amount at a certain area. So let's add, let's do that to 1900. Click in another area and you see it stretches out a little bit down there. That's to me not enough, so let's change that to 2000. And it gets a little bigger. That should do it. We click resize. Now in GIMP, you use the plus and minus symbol to zoom in and zoom out. So let's try to get pretty much the full width. And we come over here, click the letter, that's your font tool. And you want something simple and also bold. You want to make sure it's bold. And let me change that just for this demo. Okay, you want to click in this uh, top left corner and you can start adding text. And I'm adding, if I knew the exact address, I'd add it. But. It's in Manassas, Conjo's County, I'm sorry, Canales, in Colorado. And as you can see, it's pretty small down there. That's easy to fix. Come over here and play with the size. All I got to do is the up and down arrows. And that's pretty close. So let's click. Oh, just for this demo, I'm going to add something weird. Okay, you got it down. And you see you made a mistake, that 23 I put in there. That's okay. We come over here to the layers. And you got the background. And you got your text. Double click this little box here. And you come in here and you take that right out. And click close. Now, to maybe adjust it a little bit, move it around some. Now, if you notice by the pointer, you got a little can't symbol. You move it right onto the text, it disappears. So now we can just pull it to whatever's. Close. Okay, we're going to zoom out now and crop the image. I'm working in a small field. You can actually have all these things up on your desktop running at the same time, get around it very easily. And you come in here and get close. You want to zoom in, come to the bottom. When you put the pointer near it, that symbol pops up. 
Yeah, maybe you can't see it very good. Now you can see it moving around. I'm able to adjust the cropping area. And that's pretty close. Let's zoom out. Now technically this is two layers. As you can see, we want to merge these down. So, come over here to Image. Oh, one thing i got to tell you, it's got to be on the background. Come over here to Image. Now we can flatten the image. It turns nice and white. And since we set up a cropping area, we can come over here to Crop to Selection. And that's very nice. Uh, description of the headstone and I hope you'll give it a try this makes it very nice for emailing I should go into saving the image I can't get all this to fit on the whole screen and size it that way okay you're doing uh, saving it for archiving and got space, you might want to consider a TIFF. If you don't have a lot of hard drive space or storage space, you want to save it as a JPEG. And we're going to give it the name test. So I'm going to go down to the bottom, click Save. Yes, I want to replace that one. Now you'll get this box. If you, here's about the file size it's going to be. If I was going to emailing it, I might consider about 50%. It's 572 KB. Very adequate for emailing it. Archiving, I probably like uh, 80 to 90 percent. That's about a meg right there. So let's click Save. And it was that quick and easy. As you can see, there's the image. And that's what it's going to look like. I hope you enjoy.